Welcome to our lectern line. Now we're going to find the phase shift by circuit right here that has three branches, three inductors, and three resistors. We've done phase shifters with just one inductor, one resistor, phase shifters with two inductors and two resistors, but how do you do it when you have three inductors, three branches, and three resistors up there? Well, you expect that the phase shift will be positive, but how do you go about solving a circuit like this? And there's different techniques, however, the different techniques will not always give you the exact same answer. And the reason for that is that any load you put on a portion of the circuit will affect the previous portion of the circuit. For example, what if we put the terminals right here and we find the phase shift of this portion of the circuit first and then we add this as the load to that initial circuit? Well, that load will change how the rest of the circuit behaves, so it's often better just to go ahead and solve the whole circuit the way we're going to solve it here. And like I said, you'll get a slightly different answer because, like I said, if you use this as the load to the previous portion of the circuit, because we already know how to solve a circuit that looks like this, where we just have these two branches right here, if you do that, this will affect this part of the circuit so you don't really get the same answer. All right. That said, let's go ahead and start out by finding Z1, Z2, and Z3. Notice it's going to be a two-part problem because there's going to be too much work to do all in one time on the board. But once we have Z1, Z2, and Z3, we can then find V1 and V2. And from that, we can then find the output voltage that gives you the magnitude of voltage and the phase angle as well. So let's start by finding Z1 first. And so Z1 is going to be equal to the sum of these two in parallel with this one right here. So it's going to be the product over the sum. And so Z1 is going to be equal to J30 multiplied times 30 plus J60, all divided by the sum of J30 added to 30 plus J60. All right, that will give us, first when we multiply, that gives us uh, J30 times J60, that's 1800 times a negative, that's minus 1800. And when we multiply this times this, that gives us plus J900 in the numerator, divided by, in the denominator when we add, we get 30 plus J90. Now to do the division, let's go ahead and find the magnitude and phase angle. So this is equal to, in the numerator, we get 1800 squared plus 900 squared equals, take the square root, that gives us 2012.5, uh, 2012.5 2012 with a phase angle of, now we have to be careful here, because this negative sign, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around it and make this negative, and you'll see in just a moment why I do that. So I'll put the negative in front. That's this negative right here. And then we have the rest of it. So we have 900 divided by 1800. That's actually one half. Take the inverse tangent, 26.57 degrees. And that's a minus 26.57 degrees. Now this negative, we can add that. That will then add 180 degrees to the phase shift if you want to. Or we can keep it for now and work out the rest first. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to divide this by this, that's a 900 plus 90 squared. Take the square root, that gives us 94 point, uh, let's see, 94.87. With a phase angle of, that's 3, take the R inverse tangent, 71.57 degrees. Okay. So now when we divide that into that, we get 2012.5 divided by 94.87 equals, that's minus 21.21 with a phase angle of 26.57 negative and uh, minus 71.57, that's a minus 98. 0.14 degrees. And finally, to get rid of this negative sign right here, we're simply going to add 180 degrees to the phase angle. So plus 180, that gets rid of the negative. So this can be written as 21.21 with a phase angle of a positive plus 80, 81.86 degrees. 
So now we're going to convert that into real and imaginary part because then we're going to have to add it to the 40 ohm resistor to get Z2. So take the uh, cosine of that and multiply that times 21.21. That gives us 3, oh, exactly, that's kind of nice, uh, 3.00, so 3.00 uh, plus J, 81.86. Take the sine of that and multiply it times 21.21. That gives us exactly 21. Ooh, that's interesting. Exactly 21. So this is Z1. Z1 expressed in terms of the real imaginary part or in terms of the magnitude and phase angle part. All right, now we're ready to calculate Z2. Z2 is equal to, we're going to add 40 to Z1. So that would be 40 plus Z1, which is equal to 40 plus Z1, written like this, that would be 30, or no, 3 plus J21, which is equal to 43 plus J21. And if we're going to write this as magnitude and phase angle, we take 43 squared plus 21 squared equals, take the square root, we get 47.85. The phase angle of 21 divided by 43, take the inverse tangent, that's 26.03 degrees. So now again, we have Z2 in terms of the real and imaginary part, or Z2 in terms of the magnitude and the phase angle part. So now we're ready to calculate Z3. To calculate Z3, we have to take Z2 in parallel with J10. So to get Z3, that is equal to J10 in parallel with Z2. That's the product over the sum method, so that will be J10 multiplied times Z2, which is 47.85 with a phase angle of 26.03 degrees. Actually, instead of writing it as J10, what I could have done, is I could have said, well, that's equal to 10 with an angle of 90 degrees. There you go. So let's go ahead and do that. So J10 is 10 with an angle of 90 degrees times Z2. So we have the product over the sum, and the sum would be J10 added to Z2 in this format, which is 43 plus J21. So together here, this will give me J, that will give me 43 plus J31. And in, if we convert that to magnitude and phase angle format, we get 43 squared plus 31 squared. Take the square root, that's 53.01. With a phase angle of 31 divided by 43. And uh, take the inverse tangent of that, that's 35.79 degrees. Okay, now we're ready to work this out and see what we get. So, first we multiply 10 times 40, whoop, 10 times 47.85 divided by 53.01. That gives us 9.03 with a phase angle of. Uh, we get 90 degrees here, plus 26.03, and then minus, we have to subtract this one, minus 35.79. That gives us a positive 80 degrees, 80.24 degrees. And then if we want to convert that to uh, real and imaginary parts, we take the cosine of that and multiply it times 9.03. That gives us 1.53 plus J 80.24, take the sine of that and multiply it times 9.03, that gives us 9.00 essentially, oh no, 8.89, that 8.90, so 8.90. Yep, that's better. Okay, so this is Z3 can be written in these two formats. We have Z1, which can be written like this or like this. And we have Z2 up here somewhere, which can be written like that or 
like this. So now we have all three impedances. Now we're ready to find V1 and V2, and from that we can then find V0. So that's the strategy, and at least we got half of it done. Stay tuned for the second half, and then we'll do the rest of the problem and find the output voltage. And that's how it's done.